G'day, my friends. One of the questions I'm often asked by people, and I've asked myself many, many times in my life, is what is the will of God? How can I know what the will of God is? And the answer, usually in Christian circles at least, is always go look at the Bible, see what the Bible says. What, what does God want us all to do? The challenge becomes, what is God's specific will for my life? For your life what he would he have us do in a specific way we could say for example the bible teaches us that we are to uh, love our neighbor as ourself and the question was asked in the bible who is my neighbor jesus answer is essentially those in our path those we come across those that are near us that doesn't mean we don't have responsibility for others but we should notice what's in front of us at the same time the command of jesus the mission of the church is to go and to make disciples to introduce people to the good news about Jesus, to teach them who He is, and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then to teach them to obey everything that He commanded us to do. Which makes it sound like it should be easy. Just go do that. But the truth is, God does have plans and intentions for where we should serve, and where we should be, and how we should use the gifts that He's given us. We find an interesting story in the book of Acts in chapter 16, where Paul, who was on a mission to go do exactly what Jesus told him to do, to love his neighbor and to help people follow Jesus. And yet, uh, when we read this, you're gonna be surprised to discover that God prevents him from going somewhere. And you would think, well, what would be wrong with him going there and doing the same thing? I want you to consider this and hear these words and then we'll just take a moment to just ask a couple questions about it in terms of how do we discern God's will for us in the place and time that we live and find ourselves. It says this, Acts 16 and starting at verse 6. They went through the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. And when they had come up to Mysia, they attempted to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. So, passing by Mysia, they went down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go on to into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Now, I can't help but read this story and wonder, what was wrong with speaking this word and doing this work in Asia? What was wrong with doing it in Bithynia? For some reason, God wanted Paul in a specific place at a specific time. And my friends, I think we fail to understand when we're asking the question, what is the will of God? We fail to remember, really, that God is not only in control, but He's prepared in advance good works for us to do. And our job is to discern, to listen to God's Holy Spirit and be responsive when He shows us where to go and also where not to go, to do what He would have us to do and to be the most effective we can be. Now, the good news is also that even when we miss, uh, mess up, even when we, when we make mistakes about this, God can use us where we are. So don't get stuck on, well, in the past I made these wrong decisions and so now I'm, I, I don't know what to do or I don't know where to go. That's not relevant. What's important is that we keep asking the question, Lord, what would you have me do? And we listen, not just when he says yes, but when he says no, and be ready to go then as a result where he wants us to go. I heard it said a little while back that for every yes, we need to say at least 10 no's. It might be closer to 10,000 no's. Because who here hasn't had the experience of finding out about an opportunity, a chance to be part of something, or a chance to go somewhere that we realized we couldn't do it because we were already so busy, so overbooked, we didn't have any margin left. It's more important than you even imagine that we learn to hear when God says no, so that when He says yes, we're ready to take advantage of the opportunity and to do His will. Let me encourage you. When you do, you'll find greater results and greater reward than anywhere else. And that, my friends, is good news.